Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. We are a nations of the nation of explorers. It's kind of in our DNA. And so this is just part of moving America forward. Um, that was an amazing <laughs> moment yesterday. More history when it comes to the exploration of the red planet as NASA successfully landed its Perseverance rover on Mars. And Perseverance is the most advanced Mars rover ever and has already gotten to work on its big job. In fact, we could get more images from the planet's surface as early as today. And I spoke with Eric Ionson, NASA Mars Exploration Program Director, about what's next for Perseverance and its important role in the future of spaceflight. A perseverance is a really cool mission. Uh, it will study the geology near the landing site, uh, characterize the Martian environment, uh, search for signs of ancient Martian life, and assess natural resources and hazards for future uh, human explorers. In addition, scientists plan to use the instruments aboard to identify and collect samples of rocks and soil uh, for potential return to Earth uh, by a future Earth, uh, Mars mission. And this, this area they're going to is, uh, supposedly a lake bed, an ancient lake bed? Yes, that's correct. It's called uh, Jezero Crater. Uh, and it's about a 28 mile wide dry lake bed. Uh, from orbit, this crater shows uh, promising signs as being a place where it could have been friendly to life in the distant past. Uh, scientists believe the area was once flooded with water and was home to an ancient river delta. So more than three and a half billion years ago, river channels were spilling over uh, the walls of the crater and created this lake. And conceivably, microbial life could have lived there in Jezero during these wet times. Uh, and if so, we may see signs or biosignatures of, of, what, of the, this ancient life. Why is this information so important? Is it part of the role of getting humans to Mars? First, there's scientific discovery to try and determine if there potentially was life on Mars. But we're also doing things like looking at uh, the natural resources that are available for humans. And in fact, uh, we have an instrument on there that is going to uh, convert, it's a, a demonstration to see if we can convert the Martian atmosphere into oxygen, which could be used for propulsion uh, or for uh, breathing. Uh, so humans may be able to use it in the future. So this is like the thing of science fiction, right? Being able to turn the Martian atmosphere into something that we can actually breathe. Fascinating. And Ionson also talked about the return plan for the samples from Mars. This is going to take a while. NASA has a partnership with the European Space Agency and plans to launch that mission in 2026. And they're planning to return the samples by the mid-2030s. So. Yeah. That's going to take some time. They'll collect the samples, load them on a rocket, transfer those samples to another rocket that will then get them back to Earth. Mm -hmm. A very long commute. They're not taking I-4 for that. Nope. Yeah. I loved how the Mars rover tweeted out that, you know, with a little perseverance, you can go anywhere, which is mm -hmm. so great when it, when it finally landed there. So just, just amazing to see a picture from Mars. You right. Know? It's just... And ingenuity, the little helicopter that will also gather just, images and show us even more. Yeah, and eventually our children are going to think it's normal to see pictures from Mars. But for, for now, this is it's a pretty big deal. And they might go there. Yeah, you never know.